I thought I was doing well as a father to my five kids until seven or eight years ago. Pastor Peter asked me and my family to join in a family retreat in Batangas to be one of the facilitators of the breakout groups. After one of the messages that Pastor Peter um, gave, he instructed us not to meet anymore with uh, our breakout group, but that all parents should break, up, break out with their family members. And the parents were to ask just one question to their children, which was, how can I improve as a parent? And there was a rule. The rule was that we just let our children talk, and the parent wasn't supposed to talk back or defend, but just to zip his lips and listen. So as the father, I started a breakout session with them by asking, how can I improve as a father? Then I closed my mouth. That was the rule. There was silence. No one was talking. But when one started to talk, they really talked. Um, they talked about how I hurt them by the things I do, the tone of my voice, my sarcastic words, my ways at home, my decisions, how I talk to their mother, how I don't listen, and so much more. As they were talking, there were times when I wanted to explain myself because they misunderstood, but I couldn't do so because the rule was to keep my mouth shut. All I did was to write down uh, what they, they were saying on my notebook and so that I will remember. We started talking at 9 p.m., and there were many families in that big hall, I remember. At about 10 p.m., one hour later, half of the families left already. They were done, but we were still talking. At about 11 p.m., two hours later, only five or six families were left in that huge hall. Good thing it wasn't only me left, but because I saw Pastor Peter also listening to his children. By 11.30 p.m., we were the only ones left. And finally, all of my children finished talking. I said, praise God. My wife asked if she could talk, and I thought to myself, yes, finally, here's someone to rescue me and explain my side. So she started talking, and it was about me again. So we, we ended up we ended at 12 midnight. We were the ones who turned off the light, the aircon, locked the hall. But you know, as we were going to our room, I felt so light. I felt so good inside because I, I knew that it was a start of healing of the many wounds in our family, wounds that I have created. I had so many blind spots that were revealed, and by God's grace, I started correcting them. As you see, I've learned that the family will never be perfect. I was greatly affected by emotional wounds growing up because I didn't know how to process the unmet expectations in our family. Through our family opening up to one another, I was able to process the things that I felt, and I saw the lies of Satan. I realized that our whole family had the same intention and heart to restore our family relationship. This made me realize that my, fam my family is not the enemy, but that we should work together by being honest and humble when one gets hurt. The more we open up and process things together, the more we understand each other. And this leads to a stronger family relationship at home. I honestly thought that we would never get to open up about our love lives to each other because of the awkwardness and fear of being judged. But by God's grace, He has been helping our family to break the walls between us. And recently, when a man wanted to pursue me, instead of hiding it from my parents and feeling awkward about it, I opened up to them. And even after some time, when God made it clear to me to let go of that dating relationship, God helped me to be open to my parents again. Instead of them disregarding my sharing about the heartbreak, dad and mom listened, prayed with me, and helped me process what I was going through. Now I'm encouraged even more to break walls in my family by being open, building trust, and believing the best in each other. Sometimes I'm still scared of opening up about my struggles and hurts with my family because I fear that they will just judge me again as being too sensitive or emotional. Other times, I feel afraid that if I don't perform at a certain level, I would be labeled as the black sheep or not spirit-filled. But this reminds me 
that healing for our family is ultimately not dependent on our performance and that we need to trust in God when He says that He will be the one to perfect the healing in our family in His time. For me to experience His work in our family, I cannot just trust Him in my mind. I also have to trust Him completely by obeying Him, choosing to forgive and trust and serve and show love to my family even when I feel scared. Early this year, a simple misunderstanding escalated to a heated discussion after dinner. Afraid, angry, and in pain, I withdrew to my room. It seemed like there was still no lasting change in the family, despite our commitments. But God told me to swallow my pride and share my heart, even if I was afraid of getting hurt or disappointed. There were tears. We all ended up talking for hours and learned to listen in humility, with no one leaving the table until there was reconciliation. I didn't like going home before, but I do like going home now. It feels safer, even though we still experience conflicts and humbling conversations like this. It may seem easier to just dismiss or withdraw from each other, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can choose to stay committed in growing together by working things out. Sometimes it can get really ugly and hurtful, and not everyone will respond the way you'd expect, even with me. I can get defensive at times when my dad or my younger siblings would correct me. And among us, even towards mom and dad, there's pride, there's unforgiveness, there's raising of voices, there's answering back. But even if it already looks impossible at that moment, each of us can know and believe that with God, there is hope for healing in the family. Not because everyone's cooperating, because that doesn't always happen but because of a constantly faithful, loving, and sovereign God who promises to finish the work that He started in us when we gave our lives to Him. Seeing our children being able to process and resolve conflicts, it brings me so much joy. But it is not because of us as parents, but because of their personal relationship with our Lord Jesus, and they have chosen to obey Him. I hope I can say that we never had any family issues after. But no, there were many misunderstandings, irritations, troubles that followed. But by God's grace, we are now able to resolve conflict sooner and even have genuine love for each other. All praises be to our loving Father. <laughs>